I'm excited about this message. If you want to look at your sermon outline, and we also have tech help today. Angel, wave at us. If you don't know how to get to the U version or you don't know how to sign up, she's going to be out there. Uh, in fact, stand up so everyone sees who you are. Somebody might need some help today. Amen. Give Angel a hand. We appreciate her. Um, we are finishing a series on, on what the Bible says about how to get a breakthrough in our life and how to personally experience God coming through, whether it's our health, our relationships, our finances, and really felt that this was a word for 2021, breakthrough, and, and that God is a God of breakthroughs. That's, as you read the scriptures, that's the first thing you will find out, that God is a God. He's not only a God of breakthroughs, he's God of your breakthrough. Say, God is the God of my breakthrough. And, and if you go through the Bible, whether it's parting the Red Sea or Jesus' resurrection, Jesus raising people from the dead or healing the sick or casting out demons, one story after another tells us God can come through in the nick of time. Just this week, we celebrated my grandson uh, Luke's a birthday, we're just remembering eight years ago, he was born for not, something like nine minutes, he did not breathe. And, and they thought there would be permanent brain damage. And I just remember our church praying. And, and today, he's a whole young man. God did a breakthrough. And many in this church could testify that when it seemed like there was no hope, God came through in my life. And, and there's another truth that the Bible teaches us about breakthrough, and that breakthroughs happen because someone prayed. And, and we're going to start what we call this 21 days of prayer. Let me just tell you, I, I, I give you this challenge every year, but it's like if you're new or you're just visiting or checking us out online, give us one year. We are going to take you some things through things in our church this year that will utterly change your life forever. And the first one, and I think the biggest one, is this 21 days of prayer where we challenge you. By the way, in your bulletin, you'll see how to find, how to pray with us on Zoom or whatever. There's that little handout. That's very important. But I am convinced because we see it every year that when people dedicate the first part of their year to prayer, they prepare their year for victory. And, and all through the Bible, when you see a miracle, someone was praying. When God delivers Israel through the Red Sea, you know what he says through Moses? He says, I heard your cries, and so I came down to deliver you. When Peter got out of prison, it was because they were praying all night for him to get out of prison. And so here's some important truths about prayer and breakthrough. Number one, everything powerful God does for us comes as an answer to believing prayer. God does nothing on the earth of power without prayer. And many people don't realize that because they don't understand that God, when he made man, he gave us dominion. I've heard people many times ask me the question, why doesn't God do more? Why isn't God doing more on the earth today? And sometimes they don't understand that, that God gave us jurisdiction. He said to Adam and Eve, I give you dominion. Jesus said, I'm giving you keys, what you bind on earth. And, and, and what, what he's saying is God does not break his divine order. I mean, maybe I could give you this illustration. If, if say, there was someone who had a big need in their finances and they needed a lot of help and someone else knew exactly how to fix their financial situation. But if that person came in and said, give me your checkbook, give me your credit cards, I'm going to fix this. That would be overstepping boundaries if they weren't invited. Look what James 4.2 says there. It says, you have not. Somebody help me finish this one. You have not because you ask not. God say, somebody says, why isn't God doing more? He's saying, why aren't you doing more? Why aren't you praying more? Because everything God does on earth, it comes in his divine order. What we ask, when we pray, if my people will pray, I'll hear from heaven. I love this one. Prayer takes us out of the middle of the problem and puts God at the center of the equation. 
How many have ever gotten in trouble because you tried to be in control of things? Has anyone ever had a bad conversation because you were in control of what you were about to say? Because you were at the center of that conversation and, and, and you spoke out of your flesh. And, and prayer is the way that the battle goes from something I'm fighting to the battle is the Lord's. God, I don't want to be the center of the equation of my health this year, of my family this year. When this whole pandemic thing started, I gave a sermon about Jesus when the storm came in the ocean. And and do you remember how the disciples were freaking out? They they were trying to bail out the water, and, 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 and it was just getting worse and worse while Jesus was asleep at the bottom of the boat. And in that sermon, I said this. I said, when we work, God waits, but when we wait, God works. When we're trying to handle it, God is down there waiting. Are you tired yet? Are you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see, there's a, there's a word how you know you're in control. It's called worry. And how many know what worry accomplishes? Nada, right? Worry means you're acting like you're in charge of your future. But when you pray, you say, God... <laughs> I need you to step in and be the center of the equation of what's going to happen this year with my job. I need you to be right in the middle of the decision. I need you right there in the center. Now, breakthrough prayer is a little different kind of prayer. I call it a a surrender and a prayer of faith all the way to the finish line. And I want you to hear this because there's a lot of ways people pray. Um, what I would say is that most people, pray, Christians, pray about things, but few Christians pray through things. They, they pray, do you know what I'm saying? It's one thing that God help me here, help me here. It's another thing to say, God, I'm going to lay hold of you, and I'm going to pray this thing through the fin- to the finish line. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with you in prayer until you do something. And, and God loves that kind of prayer. When Jesus told the the disciples on the day of Pentecost, he says, I want you to go and wait and pray till the Spirit comes. They weren't going anywhere until the Spirit came. They didn't just say, I hope you'll do something, God. They said, I'm God, we're here, and we're going to pray until the power comes. Now, God loves it when you pray till the power comes. Uh, Last week, Jason talked about Jake. You remember that, that guy's prayer? It was... Lord, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I want to ask you, when was the last time you took hold of the horns of the altar and you said, God, I'm not letting go until I see heaven come. I'm I'm in this for all 15 rounds, God. And and this is a, a huge thing in this kind of prayer. Why? Because God doesn't just want us to pray that he'll do something on the outside, but God wants to change us on the inside while we're praying. You know, when you pray breakthrough prayer, you let God get in the weeds. You let him deal with your motives. You let him, you let him get in there in, in your, your heart, and, and you surrender, and you're, and you're crying out to God, and you're, you're letting God talk to you, and you're letting God convict you, and it's, it's something from the inside. I describe it like a caterpillar getting through a cocoon. You know, it's not just that the caterpillar gets out, but it's that the caterpillar becomes a butterfly. You know what I'm saying? It changes just in the process of praying through to the, to the freedom that it's seeking and desiring. You know, one of the stories that kind of defined my family's life, my dad used to always tell, this actually happened before we were born And if you look at the Walker family legacy, this was a moment in history, probably early 50s, you know. I'm not even born yet. My dad is a pastor of a a very denominational conservative church, and, and, and he's successful, but he knows something's missing. And, and he begins to hear about these great evangelists like Oral Roberts and, and healings and God casting out demons from people and and reads the book of Acts, and he's, and he's saying, hey, none of that's happening in our church. And he begins to get restless inside, and he gets desperate inside. And, and this, this friend of ours, we still, he's still alive today, Wayne Myers, and he invites my parents, they go to this, this it was his first experience at a Pentecostal. And it just totally freaked him out, this camp meeting. 
And he's like, this is weird. He had, he had told he had been taught that speaking in tongues was of the devil. And don't go around those crazy fanatics, you know. Uh, it, it'll mess you up and everything. In fact, his denomination told him that if you ever spoke in tongues, you'd get kicked out. You could no longer be a pastor. So he's there, and he sees all this activity going on. And my mother gets all moved in the spirit and runs down. And she comes back afterwards, and she's speaking in tongues. He becomes furious. He says, you have just destroyed my life. <laughs> this word will get out. You know, he's all freaked out. Well, as the camp meeting goes on, though, he sees her full of power. And he starts he said, God, I know there has to be more in my life. And he can't stand it anymore. So he literally goes to this house with another friend. And he says, I'm going to lock myself up in the basement. I remember he, he, he saying, he told his mom, if, if God doesn't meet me, there's, they're going to find some bones in this basement someday. <laughs> but I, I've got to have God. And nothing happens. After the second day, nothing's happened. And he's just crying out to God. And, and finally, he says, God, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but please give it to me without speaking in tongues. It was kind of like, I would like to Holy Spirit, hold the tongues, please. Anyhow. <laughs> and, uh, and so he's in there. And another whole day, and nothing happens. And he becomes more desperate. And on the third day, he's screaming. He says, God, I want you more than anything. Even if I have to speak in tongues, and boom, God hits. In fact, it's so funny because he didn't stop speaking in tongues for like three days. His tongue swelled up. God says, I I I'll tell you what I think of your ideas. Anyhow. But the power of the Holy Spirit came into his life. They went, became missionaries in Central America, Mexico and Central America. God began to move, and the whole history of the walkers changed because my dad said, God, I'm going to press in. That's going to mean you've got to get in the weeds with me, God. There's some motives that are going to have to change. There's some stipulations and stuff. But God, whatever it takes, I want you. Now, see, that's how breakthroughs start to happen in our life. I want you to go with me now to Daniel chapter 9 because this is a classic story of how to pray through a breakthrough. I like to tell people, your prayer through is the key to your breakthrough. <laughs> Let me say that again. Your prayer through is the key to your breakthrough. And this is an incredible story about Daniel. And Daniel was the great prophet that, as a teenager, was carried away a captive to Babylon and, and spent his whole life with four different kings. He became part of the cabinet. He was an incredible man of God. And at the writing of Daniel chapter 9, Daniel is in, in the very last years of his life. He's like in his 80s at least. And he's been there for well over 60 years. And, and he is already expected that he's just going to die there and everything. But, but he, he gets into the word one day and he starts reading it. So let's just read here in, in Daniel chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. Daniel 9. It was the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede, the son of Ahasuerus, who became king of the Babylons. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet, that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. Now, I want you to see the very first key to praying through for a breakthrough is you don't start by talking. You start by listening and reading God's word. You don't start with your problem or your wish. You start with God's promise. Breakthrough is taking a promise all the way to a provision. But it starts, see, see, this is why I'm asking you to read through the Bible in 2021. That's why I want you to get your Bible plan because I promise you one of the things that's going to happen this year, if you read the Bible on a daily basis, what happened to Daniel is going to happen to you. A verse, have you ever had a scripture jump out of the Bible into your heart? And it was like, whoa, that is something God wants to do in your life. Let me go ahead and read that passage he was reading. is found in Jeremiah 29, 10 through 12. It says, you will be kept in Babylon for 70 years. 
But then I'll keep my gracious promise to you and bring you back home again. See if you remember this verse, Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a hope and a future. And if you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Isn't that a great verse? Jeremiah, that was Jeremiah 29, 10 through 12. So this is the verse that, that Daniel is reading. And all of a sudden, it hits him like a two-by-four. Wait a second. God said in 70 years, he was going to deliver us. And he gets out his calendar, starts doing the math. He says, wow, it's 70 years. It's time for a miracle. And, and he begins to say, okay, God, I'm going to claim that into my life. Now, I want you to see breakthrough prayer starts with an expectant hope. And this is so huge. Breakthrough prayer comes not by focusing on our problems, but focusing on God and the solutions that he gives us in his word. Breakthrough prayer starts when all of a sudden we go from our our difficult desperation to a hopeful expectation. (laughs) How many know we could use that right now? In 2021, 2020 has been a year of a lot of negative expectations. And I'm going to actually do a series next week. You don't want to miss it. Such an important series called Great Expectations. Because the Lord showed me the expectations that we set will determine the faith that we have. And the faith will determine the breakthroughs. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for. How do you get faith? When all of a sudden you begin to expect better things, you begin to think, God, something better than what I've experienced is possible. Can I tell you, hope is your lifeline. Someone said, if there's no hope in the future, there's no power in the present. Can I tell you about 2021? If you have no hope for the future, you have no power in your life for what you're going to deal with in the present. And God says the first thing that's going to happen if you're going to get a breakthrough is you're going to start, have to start imagining a future that I have in store for you. Another plan. You know, a lot of times when I pray, I've learned not to start with all the needs. I could get discouraged. Have you ever started that? Oh, God, this, this is happening and that's happening. Before you know it, I don't have any faith. I just want to die, you know. But if I start with God, you promised. God, you said. God, you are the God who keeps your word. You're the God who delivered Israel. You're the God who healed my grandson, Luke. God, you're the God of all things. Now, I'm telling you this because when I thought about preaching on great expectations, I thought, well, that's kind of a, that's going to be kind of a challenge because, like I said, 2020. I, how many have gone back and looked at your New Year's goals? I mean, whoa. I had all these expectations. I was going to go to Costa Rica. I was going to travel more. We were going to, you know, do these more. We were going to invite all of our neighbors and have a Bible study at our home. How many know all of those things went, you know? <laughs> Anybody have some disappointments in 2020? And, and it would be very easy to say, well, I don't want to hope going into 2021. But if there's no hope for 2021, there's no power for 2021. And where does this hope come from? And we're going to learn the next week about false expectations and right expectations, but the hope that never disappoints comes from the Word of God, from who He is and what He said that He is going to do. And so here's a key. Our expectations determine our realizations and visitations. Our expectation determines our capacity to receive from God. Our, our, our expectations, this is such a powerful truth determine our visitations. They create space to receive from God greater things. Uh, the, the right expect. in fact, the word I've got for this morning, at the end I'm going to pray for you. Some of you need to exchange some negative expectations for some God expectations. Some of you can relate to how Job, if you read the book of Job, you remember how Job starts off? He said, the thing which I so greatly feared has come upon me. 
Right now, the devil's trying to put into you these kind of expectations. The expectations of fear. The expectations of of hopelessness. The expectation of your family falling apart. The problem is your expectation determines your visitation. You create faith as you expect, whether for good or for bad. Maybe you've heard the story, the funny story of the of this uh, young guy. He was watching a guy across a lake fishing. It was very curious because the guy was catching these great big fish. But every time he caught a big fish, he would throw it back in the water. Then he'd throw his line out there and he'd, he'd catch a little fish. And he'd keep the little fish. Finally, this young man says, I can't stand this. This is just too weird. So he walks around to the, to the old guy, and he says, uh, he says, sir, I don't understand this. You catch these fish, but when you catch a big one, you throw it back in the water. When you catch a little one, you keep it. He said, oh, sonny boy, I got to explain this to you. I only have an eight-inch frying pan. How <laughs> I many you know if you only got an eight-inch frying pan, you're only keeping eight-inch fish, right? How many are thankful when Noah built a boat, it wasn't a rowboat, right? (laughs) If he had built a rowboat, those poor animals would have never made it home. Your, your, Your expectation for your business, your expectation for your family determines your visitation this year. You don't want to be like those 10 spies. You remember when God called them into the promised land? They go in there, and this was their destiny, and God had promised, but the ten spies, they just saw the giants. And so when they got to the Jordan River, that was their finish line. They're they're saying, we can't go into that land. We can never have a promised land. They, They were living with their old mindset. Their mindset was, we're too small. We're like grasshoppers. We we they were living in their old identity, like many Christians are today. I'm not very smart, I'm not strong enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not faithful enough. And that that line became their limitation. But there were two spies, Joshua and Caleb. And their expectations were the promises of God. God said he would deliver us. We're well able to overcome. That's our land. That's our future. God said it. I believe it. Guess what? They saw their expectations. They had to wait 40 years. But they saw, David said, I would have failed if I hadn't believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted. I would have died in the desert. And there are many Christians that are going to just faint at this time because they didn't believe that there's more than what they've seen these last nine months. God says, I want to move the boundary lines that you've locked me into. I want you to to be like Jabez. His name meant pain. But when he prayed, he says, God, expand the borders of my life. Don't let pain define me. Give me a bigger life. God, do something great in my life this year. And because he, he stretched his expectation, God met his expectations and made him victorious. Psalms 81.10, here's two verses I want to claim. These are the words the Lord gave me. For 2021, expect more than you've ever had. Let God push back the limitations on every area of your life in what you're expecting him to do because whatever you're expecting him to do, he's planning to do more, better, bigger, stronger, greater than what you've expected in the past. Psalm 81.10 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide. Can you read this with me? Open your mouth wide and I will fill. Don't you love that? It's like these little baby birds. Have you ever seen them? They're all mouth with a little feather on the back. And they're just saying, mama, sock it to me, you know, whatever it is. I'm expecting, I'm, I'm expanding what I think you can do for me this year. Let me read you this verse in Ephesians 3.20 from the Passion Translation. I love this. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more. Somebody say infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Hallelujah. 
Our expectations as Christians are not based on what we can do, but what Christ has already done. We are not hoping that we can be good enough. It's not based on how good we are. It's based on how, what Jesus did for us. He loves us. He forgave us. He already defeated Satan. That bondage, that addiction, we're not hoping we might get over it. Jesus already nailed your sin to the cross. He broke Satan's power. It's not about hoping something might be able to happen different. It's about claiming something already happened. Jesus broke the power of Satan, broke the chains of sinfulness. He has already set you free. And he's just waiting for you to come into agreement with what he's already done. I want to read this verse in Hebrews 10, 12, because this just jumped out in my study this week, that God has expectations. And, and this was an amazing thing, that God's waiting for something. And this is, says, but our high priest, speaking of Jesus, offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. Who's that talking about? Jesus, right? There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. You know what that's saying? Jesus is waiting for something. Is he talking? What is he talking? He's waiting for his church because he gave us the authority over demons and principalities He's saying, when are you, church, going to rise and put the demons under your feet? When are you going to rise in faith and bring Satan's strongholds down? When can I rise and show the world how powerful I am? Because the church took my word seriously and spoke in my name and did what I said they could do. When, when is it going to happen? And I say, Lord, it's going to happen in our generation. We are going to rise up and put the enemy under our feet in Jesus' name. That's expectations. A, a second thing we see a key to his breakthrough is that he prayed a specific prayer. And I'm just going to go through these, and we're going to do this through our 21 days. He said, Lord, I pray that I, I can return to Jerusalem before I die. I pray that, that the children of Israel will get their land back. Now, what I want to ask you, and here's what I, in fact, when you sign up at hftw.prayer, you're going to get my 21 prayers for, for, for 2021, what I'm expecting God to do through this church. Now, many people have vague hopes when God is waiting for us to make specific requests. God, I'd like to have a better marriage. Well, what, how much better? And, and ask me what that's going to look like. I'd like my business to do better. Well, give me some more details specifically. What do you want to change about your business? God loves specific requests. The more specific, the more powerful. In Mark chapter 10, verse 51, a, a blind Bartimaeus, you ever hear that guy? Jesus is walking by. This blind Bartimaeus starts shouting, you know, Jesus, son of mercy, have, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus walks up to, to Bartimaeus. You know what the first thing he says? What do you want me to do for you? Now, isn't that kind of obvious? He's blind, right? You know? No. Jesus understood that power is released in prayer when we tell God, God, this is what I want you to do. I, I, I've got them all there. I asked God, God, I want to give away. $200,000 to missionaries through this church. And we're over halfway there already for 2021. It wasn't, God, I hope we can help some missionaries. But this is what we want to do. And so I added, and we want to double that. So this year, that's another request. Everything becomes specific. How many know, if when you got engaged, guys, when you asked your spouse to marry you, if you would have been very vague, hey, why don't we sort of uh, together and be uh, and do something and around and she said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Get specific, dude. <laughs> it wasn't until you said, will you marry me? That breakthrough came, I hope. It was specific. It wasn't vague. It wasn't general. It wasn't 
sort of out there spiritual, oh, thy holy God, may thou bless us and keep us well. And no, oh. God falls asleep on those kind of prayers. I'm just kidding. That's not the doctrine. Okay. God, would you move today that I will walk in power and I will witness to someone today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you open a door for me today? Number three, give God your full attention and seek him. I want to read this verse, verse 9, verse 3, Daniel 9, 3. This was powerful how he prayed this. Then I set my face toward the Lord, God, to make my request by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I want you to see that phrase, I set my face. In one translation it says, I turned wholeheartedly to God and I poured out my heart to him. Can I tell you, this is something we're going to do in 21 days of prayer. It's, it's, we, are, we are going to completely set our face towards God. Jeremiah 29, 13, the verse I read earlier, says, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. When are you going to find a breakthrough? When you seek God with all of your heart. When, when, when God becomes Completely the focus, and I want to ask you, how many times, I'm going to ask you to do this for 21 days, where you give some time, where nothing else has your attention. You turn off the TV, you forget about your business plan, you set aside your issues, there is nothing that you're thinking about, but God. And you begin to just cry out to God, God! I want you. I want to know what you want me to do. I want you to, know, to, to show me what I'm supposed to be. I want to hear from you, God. I don't want to go to 2021 without your Holy Spirit leading my life. I'm desperate for you, God. Can I tell you one of the main reasons we don't see breakthroughs is distractions. Our minds are all over the place. Even when we're praying, we're texting. Are you kidding me? Throw away that phone. You're in the presence of a holy God. Do you know what it's like to get on your face before him and just shake in his presence? That's what Daniel did. Holy, awesome God, I seek you. I need you. I need you, God. And I'm not leaving until you bless me. I'm not, I'm not doing anything until I hear your voice in my heart. God is asking a question. Are you desperate enough for a breakthrough? Are you telling him, God, I can't do this thing of parenting. It's not working. I got to have you show up, God. And you just absolutely seek his face. Amy Carmichael, this great missionary who had an orphanage with hundreds of kids. and She talked about one kid she would never forget because all day long as a leader of an orphanage, she would be answering questions. People would knock on her door. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? She says, I'll never forget this one little girl knocked on the door. And she just opened it and stood there. She didn't say anything. And she just tried to walk in. And Amy said, well, 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 what do you want? He said, Miss Carmichael, I just want to be with you. I just want to be where you are. And she sat there all day. That young girl rose to become a great leader. God is looking for Christians like that. God, I just want to be where you are. I just want your presence. I just want to know you more. I just want your love in my life. Fourth thing, they, he fasted. Let me just read this verse, verse 4. Let's start. No, let, let me go ahead and read Daniel. We saw verse 3, it said he fasted. But let's look at Daniel 10, verses 2 to 4. I thought this was very powerful. 
Daniel chapter 2, verses, uh, Daniel 10, verses 2 to 4. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. We wonder where we get the 21 I days. Here's where 21 days comes from, all right? I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, and what we'll learn is Gabriel, the angel, visits him. I just want you to see this idea. Some of you have heard it's kind of famous now, the Daniel fast. That's where this comes from. What, what happened? Daniel just ate vegetables and drank water. He didn't, he didn't have any wine. He, you know, fasting can look like a lot of things. But the heart of it is you, you intentionally ask God, what do you want me to completely set aside so that you have my full attention for a period of time? And, and, it, and it's often food. It could also be uh, some of you, this 21 days, as I challenge you, God will tell you I, want you, to, I want you to just get rid of the TV for 21 days. I want you to get rid of screen time. I, I want you to just quit doing that for 21 days. I, I want you to stop sugar. I want Whatever it is. Now, here's the purpose. Fasting brings focus. Fasting causes all the other things to become secondary importance to God. Fasting allows your whole attention to say, God, I'm setting everything in my life as second, third, fourth, fifth priority because I'm going to need to connect with you. And, and so just pray about that. Some of you may fast the whole time, maybe one meal, maybe something, but I'm telling you, it's powerful. God comes in special ways. I believe fast, fasting can fast forward your journey to a breakthrough. I've seen it over and over. I remember God speaking that to me once. I'm going to fast forward that as you fast. God, I need a fast forward on that breakthrough. Okay, let's, let's fast. And let's get our fast forward. And then number five, seek to bring before God a heart of full repentance. Let's go to the next verse. Daniel 9, 4 and 5 is the next thing he does. Daniel 9, uh, 4 and 5. If we could read that. We don't have that. Well, it's in your sermon outline, so let me read it to you. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and judgments. Everywhere you see breakthrough, repentance is always a big part of that breakthrough. There's several verses, probably more time is given in Daniel's prayer to repentance than any other thing that he does. Repentance is asking God's help to face the things in our life that are in the way of God working and moving. Repentance is not about trying to feel guilty. Some people misunderstand repentance because they think it means being shamed. No, repentance is about what I call being rewired. Letting God change things that have been causing dysfunction in our life. And when I was praying, the Lord says, Dale, 2021 can be either a continual rewind or a rewire. What do you mean by that? How many know we do things over and over hoping for different results? Do you just want to keep rewinding that bad conversation? Or do you want to change that conversation? Do you just want to keep rewinding that bad attitude for the rest of 2021? Or would you like to get a new attitude? Do you want to just keep rewinding the dysfunction in your marriage? (laughs) Or do you want a healed marriage? Which do you want? And repentance is where you say, God, lay the ax to the root of those things that are causing dysfunction in my life. God, I need to be rewired. You know, I, every day, I, I, part of my prayer is I put the Lord's Prayer, and part of it is forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And, and I ask God, where do I need to repent and who do I need to forgive? Guess what? Every day I get something. <laughs> One time the Lord told me, Dale, if you're not repenting every day, you're living in denial. If you're not repenting every day, it doesn't mean that you didn't blow it. 
I'm not getting too many amens right now, but hallelujah. <laughs> this is still the truth, even when it tastes like broccoli. It's the truth. All right. <laughs> Pass the t- picante sauce. Oh. But here's the truth. God's trying to change you every day of your life. And this last week, I've repented of self-pity, of overreacting to someone's criticism, from not believing a promise and, and acting in doubt, from letting fear and anxiety control my actions, to denying an area that really needed God's work, but I didn't want to admit it, not forgiving quick enough someone who had hurt me, waiting two whole days to forgive them. I could go on, but I'll save you all the details. But every time I repent, I get more of God. Why? Because I get more of me out of the way. Wherever you get something out of the way, it gets filled with God. And there's a lot to get out of the way. And so God says, humble yourself. Humble yourself and say, God, I don't want to live in denial. I want to live in deliverance. Show me. Search my heart. Teach me how I can change to be more like Jesus Christ. The sixth thing is is to include others. Pray with others. Jesus said, where two or more of you pray together. Let me just briefly say this. One of the reasons in 21 days of prayer, I urge you to pray with other people. I mean, I can, I'm an introvert. I get it. It's so much easier for me to just pray by myself. Me and Jesus. Yeah. But there is a level of vulnerability, a level of openness, a level of brokenness comes when I pray with somebody else. I know this might be hard for you to believe, but over the years, Sharon and I have had, a, had difficulty praying together sometimes. We can pray apart for hours, but somehow she would say, Dale, you pray too spiritual, and I don't pray this way, and I feel sort of uncomfortable. Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> and part of our 21 days is we're going to pray together every day for 21 days. Not going to miss a day. But you know what that means? There's, there's some vulnerability in that. This is a little awkward right now. And am I too loud? You know, am I, you know, what am I? I need to listen more. It's incredible when you pray with someone, even if it's through Zoom. Well, why do I need that? I'm telling you, Jesus said, you'll double the power of your prayer. If two or more of you. When you have to say, I don't even feel comfortable praying, but I'm going to pray. God honors that. That begins to allow things to be exposed in your heart, and and you begin to grow. And guess what? You don't have to pray fancy. The most effective prayer I've ever heard is, help! (laughs) Help me, God! (laughs) Because it comes from the heart. For for you to pray, for some of you, it's going to be a sacrifice. But the greater the sacrifice, the greater reward. I'm going to be in that building at 6.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Maybe someone will join me. Maybe you'll look up the Zoom group and say, I don't even know if I, I don't look good at 6.30 in the morning. Well, I want to, but if you will make a sacrifice, God will meet us in an incredible way. And then last, don't give up. As we've been saying, it may take longer than you thought, but will be more amazing than you imagined. I want to read this verse from Daniel chapter 10 verses 11 through 14. This is the most profound portion of scripture to explain to us why does breakthrough sometimes take so long? And this scripture kind of explains all that. It's just fascinating to me. Um, Why doesn't God just do it like that? What's going on? And, And the Bible shows us there's a lot more to answered prayer than pushing a button. After he had prayed for 21 days, the angel Gabriel appears. Here's his breakthrough. It took 21 days. But on the 20, whatever it was, after three weeks, this angel appears to him. And he says, oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. I just love that. That's how the Lord sees us. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. 
for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking his word to me, I stood trembling. (laughs) Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I've come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, one of the big archangels, had to come and help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. I just want you to see this. Boy, this would be a great study, but here's just the summary of it. What happens is that when we pray, We're not just saying a few nice little words to God. We are igniting a full-on rebellion against demonic forces and power in the earthly realm. Prayer is not a humble, tame, sweet little act. Prayer is war. Prayer is rising up and saying to the enemy, No, you can't do this to my family anymore. No, I won't be robbed. I'm not going to be stolen from. I'm not going to be destroyed. I'm not going to be condemned. No, I'm not going to live in hopelessness anymore. No, I am not punting my vision. No, I'm not giving up on my dream. No, I'm not letting my kids go to pit. No, I'm not going to live in bitterness or unforgiveness. No, no, no. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And you change an atmosphere and suddenly you release angels to go to war on your behalf and they go into full force. And man, this was a big one. The the demonic principalities of Persia against the angels of Israel, they're going at it. And and Gabriel says, you don't even know what's going on down here. It looked like just nothing was happening. But in the unseen realm, there was war. And it took 21 days, and if you hadn't pressed through and you hadn't stayed with it, you wouldn't have got to this point. But after 21 days, the breakthrough came. And now I'm here to tell you, the victory is won. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes a long time. And you don't see why, and you don't understand it from this point of view. But you are waging a war that God says you will win. Can, can I tell you what? It's all fixed. Church, we win. It's fixed. Because greater is he that is with us. If God is for us, who can be against us? We're going to win this prayer battle. It's inevitable. If we don't give up, we're going to pray through. And when we pray through, we're going to see our breakthrough. Just reminds me, and I close this story when I was A young boy, eighth grade, I did many crazy things. One of those is I decided to go for, I was double dared somehow to go into this tunnel under the highway that went all the way under the city of El Paso. And I I was going to prove that I could make it all the way to the end of this tunnel. Well, I got way down in the dark because I didn't have a flashlight or anything. And all of a sudden, I I was terrified because I didn't know how to get out. And I was filled with fear, and, and all of a sudden I heard something. I thought it was a coyote in there. I don't know what I heard. And I started running, but I could only run this high because it was a tunnel. I'm running like this as fast as I can. And I kept saying to myself, I'm never going to get out of here. I'm never going to get out of here. And then as I, I was running, there was this steel, uh, some kind of, of iron, almost like a, a big wire that was coming down that was real thick and I I literally ran head first into it and it knocked me completely out and I'm laying there bleeding I still got the scar 17 giant stitches and I'm laying there and to this day I remember it God when he chose my mother chose a full-time intercessor she had fasted a lot for me anyhow I hear a voice saying you've got to get up now and I couldn't, even, I couldn't even see, and I just started, and all I heard the voice say, you have to take another step. And so I just sort of took this step, and then 
I don't even remember what happened next, but I was suddenly at the exit of the cave. The angel of the Lord completely took me out of the cave. And I got out of the cave, and I walked on the highway, and I was bleeding profusely. My whole shirt, everything was covered with blood. Instantly, someone stopped, picked me up, took me to the emergency. They sewed me up, and it was all good. <laughs> but I always remembered that as my journey to a breakthrough. <laughs> You're going to find yourself in dark places. Fear is going to come, and it's... When a breakthrough is starting, it's going to feel like a war because you're going to feel hopeless. You're going to feel a lot of things. The enemy is going to come because the enemy is going to try to destroy your life. And you, you may start this prayer journey, and instead of it getting better, it gets worse. You get hit to the ground. And when that happens, you're, you're going to want to conclude, this didn't work. Why even pray anymore? And God's going to just tell you and whisper to you, take another step. Just take another step. I'm with you. Cry out to me. And today as we close, I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. And I just believe with all of my heart, God is calling every one of us and every one of you to take a step, to start a journey to breakthrough today. To say, I'm going to call out to God. Some of you maybe have never prayed before. I love the fact. You, you may not even feel like you're a Christian, but I love the fact that it says, whoever calls out to God will be saved. I mean, there was a thief on the cross. No one was less worthy of having an answered prayer than this thief on the cross. And all he did was cry out. Have mercy, you know, today. Remember me when you get to paradise. Just called out. And his whole eternity changed. And some, someone watching or someone here, you've been in a, in a rough place with God. You don't even know if he exists. You've been so far from him. And I just want to ask you, call out. Just call out. Show me, God. Would you stand with me? And as we pray, we're going to take up the offering as well. And, and I wanted you to be able to, to write on the card your request for this 21 days of prayer. We'll be taking these requests. So if you haven't done that, maybe you want to write on your card that you're receiving Jesus today, that you want to get baptized. You want to take the journey of 2021 as a disciple. You want to be all in. You may, you may want to just say, I want to be joining this. I'm giving you my email address so that I can get this email. Um, make sure if you want to do that, that you do that before we get ready here to take up the offering. And I felt like I had one more word just to close in as we pray. And that was, today the Lord wants to reveal a change of expectation he wants to bring into your heart. Somewhere where you have expected dread, hopelessness, and fear. He wants to replace it with hope and peace. New beginnings and a new vision. Just ask the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, where have I been expecting the worst? Where have I been expecting hopelessness? Where have I been expecting doom, failure, defeat? I bring that before you, Lord. And I'm sorry I've, I've given in to that lie. And I need help right now. And I pray that you'll change my expectation. For I know the plans you have for me. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, not to harm me, but to give me hope and a future. And I receive that promise to my heart right now. I will rise again. I will be healed. I will be restored. I will see deliverance. I will see a new beginning. I will see a breakthrough in my life. It may not be what I understand or I thought it would be, but it will be what you have planned. I will see breakthrough in my business, breakthrough in my 
workplace, breakthrough in my home, breakthrough in my habits, breakthrough in my school, breakthrough. Because that's what you promised in your word. And I receive it today. I receive you are the God of breakthrough. And you will heal me. And you will deliver me. And if you're just needing to accept Christ or rededicate, just call out to him right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again. I ask for your salvation. Change my life. Write my name in heaven. I need you, God. In Jesus' name.